Good morning and thank you for uh, attending this morning's, this is our fifth Everyday Heroes program. First of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors who make this event possible, Centerpoint Properties, ExxonMobil, Silver Cross Hospital, and Darcy Automobiles. How about a round of applause for our sponsors? <laughs> Two quick thoughts before I introduce our keynote speaker for this morning. You know, a typical news day at the Herald News or Morris Herald News involves covering things like government, crime, and a lot of not so pleasant things like maybe stuff about raising your taxes or debates people are having. But today, it's all about good news. And for the staff here today, it's our favorite day of the year, believe that or not. Most importantly, what we cover here is people who do good things in the community and have an others first approach to life and attitude. And speaking of someone with an others first approach, let me give you a brief introduction of this morning's keynote speaker. Audra Crowther grew up in Joliet with five siblings, all of whom still live in the area. She began Team Make a Difference in 2013, a local non-for-profit that performs weekend makeovers for those dealing with the impact of cancer and chronic illness. Team Make a Difference is currently preparing their 12th Hero Family Project with assistance of dozens of local groups and organizations. Audra is married to David and they have three children, Caitlin, Jake, and Justin. Kristen was honored as one of the 16 individuals at the annual Everyday Heroes Breakfast in 2016. Audra Crowther, today's keynote speaker. Good morning. Thank you, Sarah and Shaw Media, for having me. I'm honored and humbled to be asked to speak. I'm apologizing in advance as public speaking is not my comfort zone. I'll admit when Sarah asked me, I couldn't say no. But I admit a part of me had a hope when she gave me the date I'd be unavailable. As you can see, it didn't work out that way, so here I am. So I have read all about this year's honorees, and you are all wonderful and beautiful heroes. It is so nice to read about and meet those people who help make the world a better place, and all of you definitely do. The biggest thing I hope you take away from me today is ask the questions. Be you, make the time, and be kind. The definition of a hero is someone who gives of himself for the greater good of others. An individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. It's easy to see why the people honored here today have earned their award. When I started to make a difference, I needed a name for the people we help. I'm so glad we chose to call them our heroes. That is what they are. They find a way to, they find the strength to persevere and endure in spite of it all. The idea for Team Make a Difference came to me a year before I actually started it. One of my best friends had lost her sister suddenly to complications from breast cancer. She got divorced after 23 years. She was renting a home for her and her three children. And like most moms do, her focus was on fixing up her kids' bedrooms while leaving her room untouched. A year after her divorce, she discovered she also had breast cancer. She had mentioned before how much she hated her bedroom and that when her treatment was complete, she'd love to paint and fix it up. It's so difficult to rest and heal in a space you do not enjoy. My dad passed away at 58 years old, and I always felt so lucky and fortunate that we were able to care for him comfortably in our home. My friend was going out of town overnight before starting her chemotherapy treatment, and so I asked. I asked a group of friends to help me renovate her room overnight. We gave her room a quick makeover and gave her a beautiful, peaceful space to rest and heal in. A year later, Team Make a Difference was born. The day it hit me to do Team Make a Difference, I called my mom and I told her, I know what I want to do when I grow up. I started calling and asking friends. I just asked. They all wanted to be part of it, and here we are today. Everything starts with a question. The first step to receiving an answer is being brave enough to ask the question. 
I remember when I was little, we used to go visit my grandpa in the city. He was a businessman, and he, he always would ask us each, would come sit on his lap, and he'd ask us, how are you doing in school? How are you behaving? And then he, he'd give a, he gave me $5. And I remember I, I said, can I have more, please? <laughs> and so my mom was speechless for about three seconds, and the middle name came out, and she said, Audra Ellen, you do not ask for money. And he quickly said, she was very polite. She asked the question. You should always ask questions. But we don't, don't correct her for asking a question. I'm not sure if that's all true, but. <laughs> to make a difference, main mission is to grant someone, adult or child, we call our hero who is ill and in need, a place of serenity to rest comfortably, heal and restore hope. We want to create an atmosphere that will be accessible for their needs, also be uplifting, beautiful, and unique to the individual. It is our goal to make a difference in their life, as well as the life of the loved ones. We are a group of volunteer painters, carpenters, electricians, contractors, and hardworking volunteers who work hard to renovate a space for our heroes to heal and regain strength and hope so they can return to a functioning life. To Make a Difference sends the hero and their family to Grizzly Jack's Grand Bear Resort for the weekend and renovates, renovates their home in less than 72 hours. The family returns home Sunday for the reveal. Most times, a family with an ill person needs more than just the space to heal in. If we have the funding and volunteers, we do all we can to help them. If we can, we do. We hope to inspire them to pay it forward when they are well. Hero Michael Gonda said it simply, I make the time to do it, and then it's done. It's really that simple. You have to make the time. When I started to make a difference, I decided I wanted to send them somewhere close, but like a getaway. So I went to Grizzly Jacks in Utica, and I walked in, and they said, you, you can't solicit. And so I said, well, I'm really I'm kind of soliciting, but I'm really not soliciting, because I'm going to send them to you regardless, whether we pay for it or not. And they listened, and they've been our partner since we started. They take care of our families for free, and they love working with us. I had to ask the question, or it wouldn't have happened. I always knew we, I always knew we would help and include the rest of the family. The entire family struggles as well as the hero. My daughter's best friend had a younger sister who had cancer at the age of three, again at eight, and again at 12, and passed away at 14. I have seen firsthand how difficult an illness is on the entire family. To Make a Difference motto is, make the time, make an effort, make a difference. The first Hero Family Helps model was, if we can, we do, which they truly live by. This became our second motto. When I, one of our families we helped, the mom had progressive MS, and the grandma had told us, when the second, sister, second daughter was born, they had two daughters. The younger one was born, the mom's MS progressed rapidly. So the older daughter sort of blamed her sister, and she struggled with it all the time. It's her sister, but she kind of was mad at her. And the grandma told us she likes to go hide in the closet to get space to get away from her sister. The dad worked two jobs because the mom could not work. So when we went into the house, of course our main goal is to help our hero, and she was always resting and sleeping in the living room. So how do you not renovate the whole house? How do you just help the hero when the whole family struggles? So we did the whole home, and when we came back, the mom showed me, I'm wearing my wedding ring, I haven't worn my wedding ring in I don't know how many years, and she'd actually slept in the master bedroom. It was comfortable, it was peaceful. So the, the impacts are far beyond what you think when you help others. So, um, When hero William Kaplan heard people were afraid to bother him to ask for help, he said, if you continue to think that way, you are single-handedly going to cripple that organization. Let me know what you need. Ask. Don't expect, and great things will happen. We also, one of our homes we had helped, Jacob, was a little boy who had cancer at five and again at 12. At the age of five, he was told he would pass away from a classmate. Kids know there's cancer, people pass away. 
He never slept in his bedroom from the age of five until we came to his house at the age of 12. When I met him, I, I always asked him, what, what do you like, what are you, so I know how to help them. He loved escape rooms and mysteries and puzzles. And he had talked about wanting to go to the Great Escape, which was right by the hospital. Um, it was an escape room in the city. But he said, I don't think we know five people. They don't have an extended family. They, didn't have an, they don't have money. But he wanted to go. So I called the Great Escape Room. I asked the question. I explained what we're doing. We're coming. If you'd like to donate, otherwise we're still going to come. So I asked our board members, and the Team Make a Difference board took him and his mom and his um, a friend, and we went to the escape room. They paid for the entire thing, and it was a great event. Asked the question. Many people, they think they are sympathetic to others, and they probably are, but are they empathetic and compassionate? Someone with, someone with sympathy will say, I care for your suffering. Someone with empathy says, I feel your suffering. But those with compassion say, I want to relieve your suffering. It's not always easy to be empathetic or compassionate. My kids have always been, Mom, why are you crying? Mom, it's just a commercial. Mom, it's just a TV show. It's not even real. And I was always like, but can you imagine what it feels like to be in their shoes? And I, it, it's been a struggle sometimes to always feel so much, even if I tried not to. There's a reason God gave me empathy and you empathy and compassion. Continue to use your gift. Be the reason someone believes in the goodness of people. You're going to meet people who find fault with you doing good things. Why do you care? Why are you helping them? They won't take care of it, et cetera, et cetera. It almost stopped me from doing to make a difference. Don't let it stop you. Remember, how you are treated is a reflection of them, not you. At the end of our first makeover, I called to, th I called to thank my volunteers. I was so worried they'd think I was crazy and not come back because it's so much work. But instead, they were thanking me for letting them be a part of it and wanted to know when the next one was. It is not for all its hard work it's in a short time. It takes a lot of time and energy to do what we do. But when you surround yourself with people with the same empathy and compassion, great things happen. Remember, even the smallest act of kindness can have a large ripple effect or be a big thing to the person that you are helping. I remember we helped after helping, I think he was our fourth makeover, he was a 23-year-old. And I asked his dad, what did we do that you didn't like, or what can we do better? Tell me, I, I really want to know, we want to improve with each job. And he said, I have nothing to complain about, but I'll tell you two things that you did that you don't even realize how much it meant to me and my family. Brian had cancer, and he could no longer use the stairs to go to his bedroom. He was sleeping in his sister's room which was upstairs, so we flipped. We, re we renovated her room for him and renovated his room for her. And in her room, we put a plug-in in, a $5 plug-in. And he said, every time I pass the room and I smell that plug-in, I remember the day, and it means so much to my family, $5. So, and then he said, when we pulled up to the house, we had decorated the outside of his house for the fall. And he said, you don't understand. First I thought, if they did this out here, I can't wait to see what they did when, when I get in the house. But he said, ever since my son has been sick, I haven't been able to decorate. And I, we used to be like the Griswolds. I, I went all out. I knew, I knew Ryan was not doing very well, and this makeover was in October. So we decided, my family, some of our board members, and we decorated the outside of the house for Christmas. He passed away shortly after that, and so since then, I started calling, and we, I called Holiday Delights, and he's now one of our partners. So for every year we help, he goes and puts up and takes down decorations. I asked the question, so. Um, and then also, our last hero, the hero before last, Quinn was living with his grandparents, him and his sister. Their grandma and grandpa are raising him. Right before he got sick in the hospital, he had rescued a dog. And then he got an infection and he stayed in the hospital for a year. When my sister and I went to meet him, 
the first thing he said was, I can't wait to get home and see my dog. I, so when we went to meet his grandma and see the home that we were gonna renovate, the dog took off right past us when we opened the door. She had to go drive around to find him. He jumped on, on us the whole time we were there. Well, Quinn lost most of his abdominal organs and muscles through infection, and family and friends were concerned, how can he keep this dog? But that's all he looked forward to was his dog. So I started making calls, and the canine trainer for the Juliet Police Department took the dog home with him, trained him for two weeks, and brought him back to the family after we finished the makeover. We made a few calls. We, we had bathfitters come give him a bathroom. We just started making calls, ask the question. Remember, ask, be you, be kind, make the time, make an effort, and make a difference. Thank you. I thought she said she wasn't good at public speaking. Um, thank you very much. A uh, couple uh, pieces of information um, regarding the awards, and then we're going to hand those out. So um, this year we received over 70 nominations for Everyday Heroes. And I'd like to take a, make a quick shout out to our selection committee. Um, it's difficult work, because you have to narrow down those selections and then pick the final 16. And one specific thank you I'd like is to J.D. Ross, who's been a member of our selection committee for the last five years and for all of his contributions. So, J.D., thank you very much. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to call up the presenters uh, from our sponsors, uh, Pete Colarelli from ExxonMobil, Brian McKiernan from Centerpoint Properties, and Leslie Newbon from Silver Cross Hospital. You guys could come up, please. So here's how we're going to do this. Um, we have the awards we're going to hand out in alphabetical order. If you would, I'm going to read a brief uh, summary of the uh, awards that are going to appear in the program or in the uh, supplement that will be in this Sunday's uh, Herald News and Morris Herald News. And then um, one of our presenters will hand out the award to you. We've also got this year a, uh, a gift card from Heroes West, which is a restaurant in Joliet. They graciously have donated a gift card to all the winners. It's a great tie-in because Heroes West, Everyday Heroes, so I'll hand that to you. So our first Everyday Heroes Award winner, I'm sorry, our first Everyday Heroes Award winner from 2019 is Aurelio Paul Balducci. Paul was the founder of the Kiwanis Club of Frankfurt in 1976 and has taken a very active role ever since. He has spearheaded a scholarship program for the special needs students, a camp for kids with cancer, donations for food pantries, and meals for families in need during the holidays, and, 40, and for 40 years has hosted the Kiwanis Games for children's, children with disabilities. In 2018, Paul received the first ever President's Award from the club. Kiwanis of Frankfurt President Sam Giordano shared this about Paul, quote, he works so hard each and every year to help kids. He's always the first one to arrive to help and the last one to leave. At 81 years old, nothing stops him. Nothing holds this guy back. Congratulations. Our next winner is Braden Karanoff Huber. Braden has taken the importance of community service and volunteerism very seriously from an early age. Inspired by an accident that impacted his sister, he and his brother Alex began collecting pop tabs over the years as they have raised over $15,000 for Ronald McDonald House. Braden said he hopes to keep the pop tab fundraising going after he gets older saying he plans to pass the tradition down to his cousins so he can keep it going for generations. In addition, Braden and his 4-H group recently built a little free library for kids who don't have money for books. Nominator Phil Baisley had this to say about Braden. Every day means every day for Braden. He's doing something 365 days a year. 
Congratulations, Braden. Our next Everyday Hero winner is Sam Cellino. Sam may be best known for his role in spearheading Christmas cheer, to spreading Christmas cheer to various groups and neighborhoods in the greater Crest Hill area. But his good deeds go well beyond the holiday season. He's also known as an active board member for the Richland Grade School Board. Three years ago, he began a video club at the school district in order to teach the students how to use audio and visual, equi video, visual equipment as well as make sure to highlight all the events, not just the school's most important and popular ones. Outside of Richland, this year he will receive his 25-year pin from the Crest Hill Lions Club, a group that helps others who cannot afford glasses, hearing aids, and more. Cholino said he hopes to keep, keep going because, quote, when you volunteer and constantly help someone, it gets in your blood. I like being myself and unselfishly help others, love others, and not expect reward. Congratulations, Sam. Our next Everyday Heroes Award goes to Charlie Clemens. Charlie began boxing 60 years ago in his father's gym when he was six years old. A chance encounter with a boxing gym owner led him back into the ring, and now he's assisting patients that suffer from Parkinson's. KFIT Gym in Manuka hosts a class called Rock Steady Boxing, which he is specially designed for those with Parkinson's. Charlie is an instructor there three days a week. He has learned that although his clients have a disease, they mean business when they're in the gym. Quote, I don't take it easy on them or they get upset. They want to work hard just like anyone else. He also goes the extra mile and visits them in the hospital if they become ill. Charlie had this to say about his experience. I get to witness miracles and I see this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The people who get through this every day are the real heroes. Congratulations, Charlie. Our next Everyday Heroes recipient is Saul Garcia. Saul is the behind the scenes guy that makes JCTV tick. Community TV is essentially a volunteer operation, so you need dedicated folks willing to donate their time on top of working their regular jobs that support their families. Saul still works a full-time job so he understands boundaries and knows he cannot cover everything in the city. But he wants to keep the channel local, which has great importance to him and everyone in the community. Lately, with, with live stream shows having increased in popularity, Saul tries to put many things on the live channel. JCTV volunteer Dick Schuster said, quote, I probably wouldn't function too well without Saul. He's my right-hand man, and he does everything with a big commitment. If stuff breaks, we better have somebody who knows how to fix it, and he's my computer whiz kid. Congratulations, Saul. Our next Everyday Heroes winner is Mike Gonda. Mike's retirement is filled with assisting a number of local groups and organizations. He's the handyman at St. Rose Wilmington, where he abs absolutely anything that needs to be done is taken care of. He's a member of the Wilmington Knights of Columbus and has also served as Grand Knight. Mike is an Army veteran and places flags on the graves at Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery for Memorial Day and provides pokers to volunteers when the ground is too hard for them to get the sticks in the ground. In addition, Mike is a Patriot Guard rider assisting with veterans' funerals, in, including bringing home soldiers who have last, lost their lives in service. When asked about his dedication, Mike said, it's the patriotic thing to do 
and the families appreciate it. It's my way to show support for the armed forces. Congratulations, Mike. Our next Everyday Heroes winner is Nancy Hackett. Nancy has been involved with Girl Scouts for about 60 years, first as a Girl Scout herself, then a troop leader where she has served ever since. Nancy has a great dedication to Girl Scouts. She even has a Girl Scout museum in her house. Beyond Girl Scouts, Nancy is active in Romeoville Area Historical Society, where she has been president for 15 years and co-penned a book with others in the community. As a librarian, she has joined the board of, the direct, board of directors at the White Oak, Oak Library and currently sits in her second six-year term. Debbie Nuara, Girl Scouts of Greater Chicago and Northwest Indiana, had this to say about Nancy. Quote, she is dedicated and passionate about what she does. She has been a Girl Scout volunteer for over 50 years, and when she gets involved in something, she certainly stays with it. Congratulations, Nancy. Our next Everyday Heroes winner is Michael Johnson. Mike has a diverse volunteer portfolio since retiring over a decade ago. He joined the Friday Memorial Squad at Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery. These daily squads, mostly military veterans, attend a dozen or more funerals per day. Mike is also a tour guide at the Joliet Area Historical Museum, and when the old Joliet prison began tours, he, did guide, he guided tours there as well. During the holiday season, the Army veteran and former prison guard spreads Christmas cheer at local animal charities and pet rescues. Mike shared this thought, I'm able to volunteer and give back to the community. I volunteer to do things I really like, and everything I do is a team effort. There are a lot of great people involved in the cemetery, museum, and animal rescues. Congratulations, Mike. Our next Everyday Hero winner is Jackie Kagenbein. When Jackie was forced to retire from teaching first grade in 2007 due to her ongoing battle with cancer, she took her gift and passion for crocheting and made blankets and sweaters to comfort those undergoing cancer treatments themselves. Over the last 16 months, her initiative, which is known as Cozy Hugs Against Cancer, has produced 50 pieces, all of which are given away for no charge. One of the pieces Jackie made was a German Shepherd blanket, which went to a former student at Jones Elementary School that Jackie had taught a number of years ago. Jackie shared this with us. I have a drive in me to help others. Maybe that's the teacher part of me. I miss being in my classroom and the interaction with students and parents. I have a compassion for people because I understand the journey. Congratulations, Jackie. Our next Everyday Heroes winner is William Kaplan. <laughs> Receiving the award on, Bill, on Bill's behalf is Jay Bergman. Bill says he cut his teeth while working on the Greater Joliet YMCA Board many years ago, citing many astute individuals that worked with him as a young attorney. Afterward, Bill joined other non-for-profit boards, including Big Brothers Big Sisters, Guardian Angel Home, and the Joliet Area Historical Museum. Currently, Bill is an active member of Joliet Rotary, Joliet Junior College Foundation Board, and was recently president of the Joliet Jewish Congregation. 
He is actively involved in the Will County Habitat for Humanity, where he offers pro bono legal work and assists with the acquisition and sale of real estate. Nicole Murray shared this thought on Bill's value. Quote, the workload he carries is priceless. I don't think unless you're affiliated with Habitat for Humanity, people would know just how much work he carries. Congratulations to Bill. Thank you. Our next Everyday Heroes winner is Carolyn Kucinic. Carolyn said she currently only has five days a week booked for her volunteer work, so she's looking for something new to fill her Saturdays. <laughs> she says it's not her thing to go shopping, and she just can't sit at home. She's been active with the United Way of Will County as a volunteer for over 30 years and as a general personal donor as well. When she retired, Carolyn added Senior Services of Will County, the Disability Resource Center, and the Salvation Army to the list of non-for-profits non that she assists. In addition, Carolyn has been with the Trinity Counseling Center, a division of Trinity Services, for 15 years. When asked about her busy volunteering schedule, Carolyn simply said, it makes me feel good to do something for somebody who needs help. Congratulations, Carolyn. Our next Everyday Heroes winner for 2019 is Terry Kunze. <laughs> Terry is one of the first female members of the Joliet Kiwanis Club and became president in 2006. While this was momentous in itself, it led her to start an Up and Action Club, which are affiliated with Kiwanis and offer opportunities for in individuals with intellectual disabilities. There are now various chapters of the Action Club which assist as kids transition to becoming adults, and Terry is at the center of it all as an advocate for those with disabilities. In addition, she went even further and became an administrator of the Action Clubs in the Illinois Eastern Iowa District of Kiwanis, where she travels throughout the states and starts new Action Clubs. Fellow Kiwanis member Karen Guzman shared this about Terry. Quote, she is aware of what people with disabilities are up against and she helps them to become productive members of society. Congratulations, Terry. Our next Everyday Heroes winner is Karen Schillings. Karen has been involved with Girl Scouts for 39 years, starting as a troop leader for her daughters, Denise and Kareem. She has served as chair of the steering committee for the Girl Scouts of Greater Chicago and Northwest Indiana Council Historians, chair of the Council for Volunteer, Volunteer Recognition, and national delegate of the Girl Scouts of the United States of America. The most notable ac accomplishment has been her creation of the Corrine Janine Schillings Foundation in honor of her late daughter, who died in an accident in March 2004. The foundation offers scholarships to Girl Scouts who have earned their gold and silver, silver award and plan to study a foreign language and cultures in college. Regarding the foundation, Karen had this to say. After the accident, I was in the hospital for five days and had time to think. I needed something positive out of the negative. We wanted to keep Corrine's legacy alive. Congratulations, Karen. Our next Everyday Heroes recipient for 2019 is Joe Schmitz. In 1979, Joe had $250 and bought food for a family at Christmas, and that was when his mission and a nonprofit organization 
Operation St. Nick began. Currently, a large number of Grundy County-based individuals are serviced, including a bicycle program for children with special needs, the military program that has Christmas in July theme for active personnel or veterans, the back-to-school program that serves kids in needs right before school starts, the family assistance program that helps families who have a life event and need assistance, smaller programs including filling Grundy County food pantries, gas cards, and a literacy program. Operation St. Nick board member Missy Durkin has known Joe for 25 years and described him as a genuine, authentic, and dedicated person. Quote, we watch him and try to emulate what he does. He encourages us to dig deeper and help others. Congratulations, Joe. Our next Everyday Heroes winner for 2019 is Tracy Spasia. <laughs> Tracy has woven herself into the fibers of the Joliet community purely for the betterment of its people. She has served on the Joliet Township High School District 204 Board of Education for eight years and was elected president in 2019. She sits on the Education Committee for the Joliet Chamber of Commerce and the Joliet Partners in Education Committee. Tracy also serves on the Advisory Council with the YMCA Teen Achievers Program, on the board of the Spanish Community Center, and is involved with the Will County Take Back the Night event, and is active on the Bridges Out of Poverty initiative. Nominator Larry Weir shared this thought. Tracy is such a bridge builder with all kinds of groups. She's a beautiful human being with the sole focus to improve her community. Congratulations, Tracy. Our final 2019 winner of the Everyday Heroes Award is Joanna Vates. Joanna Vates' family trademarked the, team name, the, the name Team Nicholas to honor their late son and to help other children with cancer. Joanna has not stopped giving in her son's name and the impact has grown immeasurably. As Team Nicholas was getting started, they determined the highest demanded items were Legos or block sets. So in 2013, Joanna launched a Lego block set drive. They collected 100 sets in that first year and in 2018, they collected 925 sets. Kickoff for the fundraiser in 2019 is coming up in October. Quote, Legos were near and dear to Nicholas's heart. Those were the toys he loved at the hospital, and they just never had enough. Team Lick Nicholas has also designed Father's Day and Mother's Day baskets for parents and guardians who stayed at the hospital. Everything's designed so others are involved realize that no one's forgotten during such a difficult time. Congratulations, Joanna. Next, we ask all the recipients uh, to share their thoughts on it, what it means for them to be an everyday hero, and they do this in their own words. So we're going to have a video for everybody right now. It's an honor to be nominated with all the other real heroes. Well, I was flabbergasted when I got the contact that I was an everyday hero. Every day is fine. But a hero to me does spectacular things, and I just live a normal, although very busy life. I was raised to be helpful. I was raised to help people if you can. I'm no hero. I'm just a kid who likes to help causes and inspire me. It gives me a peace of mind knowing that someone was in need, and I helped. As long as I'm able, I will be there for my family, friends, and community. And to be uh, nominated and get the appreciation from the people I work with now really meant a ton to me. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, when they announced it at the gym and then they, all the, the all my Parkinson's athletes started applauding uh, about balls, it, it was fantastic. Well, it is an honor uh, to be part of uh, the people. They make an effort to help the community. 
it's not a solo effort. Um, I'm surrounded by great staff, great volunteers at Abe Lincoln Cemetery, the museum, the prison tours, and of course the animal charities and animal shelters. I'm just a survivor who understands the journey each individual in our community is going through. I'm just trying to show my support and compassion as they go through their journey and face what they have to face. It's important to give back to the community and to organizations. And that is the way I feel about what I'm doing for the, the community and these organizations. Our heroes are the kids that are going through cancer treatments right now. I don't feel like a hero, but I just do what I can to give back. This is my community, and if this is an opportunity to shine a light on some of the things I'm involved in and some of the incredible people that have organized and love this community and are doing great work, I'm glad to be a bridge to get, put that information out for others. It's very humbling, and it's a big honor that I was not expecting. Because of the opportunity to, to do Action Club and to be a hero, I am surrounded by everyday heroes that motivate me and um, have uh, become fr my friends. And so I've just grown since I've uh, been at Kiwanis and, and participated in our Crossroads Church. It's just really um, made me a better person, I think. But it's always nice to know that someone recognizes the work that you do and appreciates that work. I know there's hundreds of people in the Joliet area that deserve that award as much as I do. I know St. Francis had it right in his prayer, you receive by giving. I know that for a fact. If you can help somebody, help somebody. If you can't, find somebody who can help somebody. And primarily, that's what keeps me going. It's very important for me to be involved in my community through aluminum recycling and pop day after day. I can see the value to the environment by the tons of aluminum we've recycled over the years. And the money we've raised has gone to Mount McDonald House's work to public families with kids in the hospital. And to that, all the other kids who have helped me in this effort and it's overwhelming. I love helping people and the environment this way. When you do things where you volunteer and help others, the person that really gets awarded is you. You're the one that, I mean, I think it's gonna happen that way, but that's the way it happens. You're the one that gets most of the, the good things from it. Being myself and unselfishly helping others. I love what you do. Help others, not expect a reward. Put yourself out there and don't way to be asked and going out of your way for others. I think it's important for the people to know what's going on with, with our local government because they, they can uh, change our uh, community in a way that it can change our lives. And I think it's very important for all of us to know what's going on. Well, it's important to me to be there for my fellow Knights of Columbus, to uh, be there to support them and help them in the projects and events we do. I know a lot of guys would like to be there, but can't because of their job and family, but I'm very lucky that I can be there. I have the time to do it. I have earned the Girl Scout Thanks Badge. Continue to share the knowledge with leaders and girls. I've gotten a lot of uh, things out of it. I was on the World Association Committee from the United States and got to travel to England and Switzerland to our uh, sites there. I was on the Swiss Committee. I really enjoy all the, all the activities and my friends and working with everybody. And talking about Girl Scouts, I even just did it in the nursing home telling them about my Girl Scouts. Cozy Hugs Against Cancer is important because it shows those in our community compassion and love and that while they're battling cancer, there's somebody else out there that cares for them that they're not alone. I want them to know that they're in my thoughts and prayers. Everything I do is handmade, so a piece of me goes into what I'm giving to them. And what makes it unique is that it is handmade and they're getting a piece of my heart. I enjoy doing all of the volunteer work and it keeps me busy, it gives me something to do all the time. 
and I enjoy meeting all these new people that I have become some lifelong friends. I just enjoy keeping busy and helping out in the community where I can. It's important because they are doing so much in their community and I love to see both their reactions to it. They're growing, they're um, able to have socializations within the group and the people in the community get to know them on an individual basis and see them in a different light. They see them as a, an asset to the community and that's what motivates me. After every meeting, I leave feeling good about myself and about them. So it's really about the people that are in Action Club. I'm not an everyday hero. The everyday heroes are really the first responders who sacrifice life and limb. And, and second of all, there's the physicians and nurses that save life and limb. And thirdly, there's the parents who work two, three jobs to benefit their children and provide a better life. So I'm not an everyday hero. I want to be described as an everyday hero. <clears throat> there are certainly others that do that. The people seem to really appreciate what we do uh, at Abe Lincoln Cemetery, the museum tours, the prison tours, and of course, uh, playing Santa for animal charities which my wife is also involved in. Um, people seem to really appreciate it and that makes it rewarding. I think it's probably important to everyone to contribute to their community. I can't imagine anyone being indifferent to trying to be involved and make things better. Not everyone has the same capacity and same experiences to be able to contribute in the same way, so finding your spot and, and being able to do that, that's very satisfying. If I do the things that I do, then I fulfill my Girl Scout promise, which is to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Also, as a woman of faith, I feel that we all should try to follow the greatest commandment of all, and that is to show love in every aspect of our life. So, if I'm going to do that, then I need to give service. I've always said that no child should have to wake up on Christmas morning and ask their parents, why does Santa stop at the neighbor's house and pass theirs by? Operation St. Nick Christmas Program makes sure that all families that have fallen in financial hard times during the year have a beautiful Christmas just like your family and mine. It's the most wonderful thing I've ever done in my life. It is important to us to give back to uh, children that are battling cancer or critical illness in our community. After being in the hospital with our son, we saw a need and wanted to give back. Team Nicholas does that. I worked for a gentleman that had special needs children and to see what they had to put up with, uh, it's, it's a big 24-7 day job for the parents. And when I was asked to join Kiwanis, I realized Kiwanis, one of their segments is to deal with special needs children and young adults. And that's what really I enjoy. And if you see a smile on their face, it's worth a million bucks. And thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. One round of applause, again, a round of applause for our, our winners. Uh, in wrapping up here, uh, I would like a, a couple thank you, a number of thank yous here. Uh, anybody that was that nominated any of our winners today, if you would please stand. If you nominated any of the winners today, you'd please stand. The program doesn't work if you don't nominate people. So again, thank you very much for, for assisting in the process. 
um, and thank you for sharing those stories. Um, again, one more time, uh, thank you to all of our sponsors, uh, Darcy Automobiles, Centerpoint Properties, Silver Cross Hospital, and Exxon Mobil for making this event possible. So one more round of applause there. And two sets of, of folks we have not mentioned today. Um, uh, from JCTV, uh, Dick and Millie Schuster, they filmed this event. If you live in Joliet, you'll be able to pick it up. If not, we'll, I don't know, you have to, we'll figure out a way to get it to you. If you can reach out to us at the paper, reach out to Sarah Dilge, our marketing manager. But they've uh, videotaped this event for us the last five years. And we can get a, a DVD to you or something so you can reach out. So Dick and Millie, thanks for showing up today again. And the final piece of business, um, I'd like to thank, again, this is, I think, the fifth year she's done it. Allison Selk is a freelance writer for us. She talked to all the winners, wrote the story. So, Allison, thank you very much for your help with that. And then um, the section itself will be in Sunday's paper. If you don't subscribe, shame on you. Um, <laughs> just kidding. It will be available online Sunday as well. Herald, the Herald, the Herald News herald-news.com or morrisherald-news.com or you can pick up, pick up a copy because you came today, you get a preview of it. Uh, Sarah had them covered up like, you know, like it was a nuclear weapon or something, but she had them covered up uh, on tables as you exit either way here today. You can pick up a copy uh, on your way out. Please just take one. If you need extras, just kind of come back and let us know or whatever, but we don't have like a thousand of them sitting here. We just ordered enough for everybody today. Uh, and again, thank you very much for coming. Uh, and really appreciate it. And everybody have a great day. Take care.